Well, the Women's Health Initiative was a study which was conducted to see if there were indeed health benefits to Primarin and Primarin and Provera in combination. And the study was actually stopped prematurely when especially the PrimPro arm showed an alarming increase in breast cancer. Primarin and PrimPro both increase the risk of breast cancer, heart disease, blood clots to the lungs, and strokes. It showed an increase in clotting, pulmonary embolus, uh, an increase in heart disease. It really showed, in my opinion, what happens when we use a strong estrogen component and no progesterone. But sadly, some physicians are still using those despite the fact that there are other products which are available which are exactly the same as what women normally have, bioidentical hormones. The sex hormones females produce are the estrogen hormones, which are estrone, estradiol, and estriol. They also produce progesterone. Women also produce some testosterone as well. But the primary hormones that govern the female menstrual cycle are the estrogen hormones and progesterone. Progesterone is an amazing hormone. It does, it balances the estrogen effect and by doing so, really is wonderful at getting rid of the excessive fluid retention a lot of women experience. It helps women maintain their ability to deal with stress. It's a natural calming hormone. You'll sleep better with it. It's the anti-PMS hormone. So it helps with all aspects of things that can be seen before a cycle. Irritability, breast tenderness, headaches, cramping, clotting. All those can be relieved with progesterone. Progesterone plays a balancing role in a woman's body. When you look at her menstrual cycle in four weeks, the first two weeks, estrogen dominates, and in the second two weeks, after ovulation, progesterone dominates. So progesterone balances estrogen. Uh, should the woman become pregnant, progesterone, progestation, prepares the endometrial lining for the fertilized egg. Progesterone literally means promoting gestation. So it prepares the womb after the endometrial lining has been stimulated by the estrogen, it balances out preparing the womb for a pregnancy. Progesterone is also a critical bone builder. Uh, progesterone is critical for brain repair, whether it's after injury or merely free radical damage or inflammatory damage that goes on in life anyway. And it seems to be very important in cancer prevention. The way the body takes care of cancer cells early on is uh, a process called apoptosis, and progesterone and vitamin D are two critical parts of that process. That's why we see women with the lowest progesterone levels get the highest cancer rates. And progesterone is also a mood lifter. It enhances romantic moods and inclinations, keeps her bones strong. So progesterone is the key hormone for women's health, and it's been overlooked by and large by physicians. Progesterone is an amazing hormone for our brain. It helps the myelin sheath develop. Think about a single wire with um, the insulation around it. So that myelin, in order to function properly, requires progesterone. People with low progesterone can get very bizarre neurological symptoms. Progesterone is big in brain, especially in the brain, especially brain repair. Uh, an emergency room doctor, uh, I believe back in the early 90s, uh, saw that with what appear to be equal amounts of brain trauma or head trauma that women as a rule did better than men. We know progesterone is critical for healing. In fact, they've actually shown that when women have injuries, they reheal much faster, especially when they're younger and in the time of the menstrual cycle where progesterone levels are high. So progesterone is a key hormone for the connections in the brain, for the myelin sheath to develop. We think more clearly with progesterone and we're also more upbeat. Estrogen's the stimulatory hormone. All these hormones have powerful effects, first and foremost, primarily on the brain. Well, estrogen is vital for the brain to work properly. Without adequate estrogen, women aren't thinking as clearly. Also, there's gonna be more bone loss. Um, estrogen helps bone health in that uh, it slows down bone breakdown, as opposed to progesterone that stimulates bone buildup or bone formation. It also causes women to get her secondary sex characteristics she has in puberty, causes the development of the breast, 
in the development of the female figure and female uh, uh, behavior. Estrogen is an important part of the menstrual cycle in that the first two weeks of that cycle are estrogen dominant and estrogen leads to the buildup, the growth of that endometrial lining. Estrogen promotes the endometrial lining of the womb to bulk up and to grow as it prepares and becomes cultivated in anticipation of a pregnancy. Estrogen is also good for collagen formation. That's that basic substance uh, that makes the skin look nice. With low estrogen, you have thinner skin. You're going to be more prone to bruising. You'll also have discomfort with intercourse so that uh, it'll be less enjoyable. And women generally have lower sexual interest with low estrogen levels. Hot flashes, night sweats are, are also very common. And you don't sleep well with low estrogen and have low-grade depression. So estrogen is a key hormone for health. The reality, though, is you need to know whether a woman needs it or not and replace it when necessary. But it also always needs to be balanced by progesterone. Three main estrogen hormones are estrone, estradiol, and estriol, commonly referred to as E1, E2, E3. They are made primarily in the ovaries, although fat tissue can produce female hormones, particularly estrone. When you're talking about the safety of estrogen hormones, I believe it's critical to mention that in the presence of progesterone, I don't believe any of the estrogens are unsafe. Estrogen is made to be used in the presence of progesterone. However, in the absence of progesterone, estradiol seems more involved in increasing cancer risk, for instance, and estriol seems not to be involved in that process and perhaps even protective against breast cancer. In our hormone replacement therapy, we use a combination called bi, meaning two est estrogen. The two estrogens we use in combination are estriol and estradiol. For typical hormone replacement therapy at menopause, I think it's important to realize that women before menopause have three primary estrogens, and at menopause they lose two they retain the ability to make some estrone. So I like using biest, which contains estradiol and estriol, because those are the two she stopped making. It's usually about 20% estradiol, 80% estriol, and that combination is known as biest, and that can be used as a cream or capsule. And it's very important to always balance that with progesterone. Estrogen dominance is the situation in a woman's body where the estrogen hormones are dominant over progesterone. Estrogen dominance is a term that was coined by the late Dr. John Lee, and it really describes a progesterone deficiency so that any amount of estrogen that rem remains, even lower estrogen amounts in menopause, can dominate the scene, and the symptoms you see are symptoms of estrogen effects going too far. So the predominant effect is going to be the estrogen effect, which tends to be stimulating. So if you're looking at the lining of the uterus, the uterus would be thicker, uh, breast tenderness, migraine headaches, feeling depressed. These are all some symptoms you can get with estrogen dominance, fluid retention, and they're relieved with progesterone. Well, the signs and symptoms of estrogen dominance are going to vary depending on how severe it is and in just individual women, but headaches, breast tenderness, depression, heavy bleeding with your menstrual cycle, with cramping. Uh, women also are more prone to fibrocystic breast changes, ovarian cysts, endometriosis. All that has to do with the decline in progesterone and estrogen becoming the dominating hormone. The long-term effect of the uh, progesterone deficiency sadly can be cancer, especially breast cancer.